sometimes things just get thrown out. Are you serious? No. I am so sick of this. Five seconds, that's all you give me? This was gonna be a great ad. You know? No. You don't get to skip the... What? No! Have you ever wondered whatever happened to your favorite OG YouTubers? Have you ever wondered if they became a monk or got rich off of Bitcoin and disappeared? In today's day and age, being a YouTuber is one of the most sought after professions in the world. But this era of YouTubers I'm talking about is before people were just getting rich off of making just YouTube videos. I'm talking about folks that started off with a webcam or a regular camera and then became something way bigger than they ever expected. What happened to those fools? Everybody who does it now does it with the intention of becoming the next something. People used to post on YouTube just to send videos to their friends. Like Negro he grow. He started off making videos just to send to his friends and became what he became. Tonight on Channel 6 News, the increase of violence towards Asian Americans continue to rise during this coronavirus pandemic and why scientists believe you should reconsider your next hate crime. Coming up next. Good evening, I'm Ryan Ankerman. Like whatever happened to William Haynes from SourceFed, like he used to be such a cute nerdy guy. Now he's this ripped influencer boxer. What happened to the sweet individual that used to be there? I heard William Haynes is a pastor now, but every time he get up there, he can't stop talking about anime. I just wanna say thank you kids for coming down today, taking time away from Pokemon Go to learn about Jesus. <laughs> And to all the seniors, thank you for taking time away from your busy lives in the casino to learn about Men's Day. <laughs> yes, yeah, some people consider me to be a disappeared or missing YouTuber, likely because I didn't post YouTube videos for two years. And two years in YouTube time is 20 years. Apparently, if you don't dedicate your entire life to a parasocial relationship, you might as well have been passed away. I don't consider myself to be an OG OG YouTuber because I, I was posting videos back in 2008, but I didn't really get successful until about 2014-ish. So that's the era that I wanted to talk about in this video. That 2014 era was a golden time for YouTube and content creators because it was before uh, YouTube and social media in general became so hyper produced like so many people were successful based 100% off of their personality You didn't have to spend a million dollars to get a million views. So today we're gonna do a video I'm gonna pull some names out of this bowl and I'm gonna tell you if the youtuber is still around or not or if they recently are okay Community channel Natalie Tran, you know what? It would be nice just to go out to dinner. Maybe you could pretend right. like you like right. having me around. No, that's okay. You can just keep texting. How'd you get my phone? Who is this? What are you doing with my Tina? phone? Tina? No. Oh, no. Um, I miss you too. Why are you missing Tina at 10 p.m. at night time? have my phone. That's a bit weird. I used to love Natalie Tran's videos. Comedy S tier. Well, I don't know. I, I, I just don't it. understand how you haven't seen it. I mean, <sighs> and here we go. Possible. How have you not seen it? Why are you getting angry because I haven't seen a movie? I understand if you get angry because I spoil a movie. Oh, I love this actor. Yeah, he dies though. What? And then I try and back out of it. <laughs> I was only joking. He doesn't die. He dies, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he does. See, that I understand. But yeah, Natalie Tran's style of YouTube doesn't really exist today. First and foremost, because everybody has to make such long videos. YouTube videos, viral YouTube videos, used to just be about uh, a specific subject. Um, like, you could just have one funny idea, and that's what the video is about. But now, YouTube forces you to be a niche. So, so like, a, a YouTube comedy channel doesn't really exist like that. Well, if you're trying to make YouTube videos for money, for having a career, uh, yeah, making videos in this style doesn't really exist anymore for the professionals. Hey, Nat, don't forget Daylight Saving ends tonight. I am sick of this daylight shenanigans. They're going to come here and take my ad. They're going to come into my house and take my ad. No, 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 the clocks go back. So we're gaining an hour. You get an extra hour. Well, in that case... What are you doing? We've been given the gift of time. So we need to plan what we're going to do with this extra hour. Oh. We should probably take a break. She's definitely one of my favorites. I remember I saw her at VidCon once and I didn't talk to her and then I never saw her again. 
I was actually really sad about that. But she is 100% alive. And she's another one of the YouTubers that people pretend like you don't exist anymore if you don't dedicate yourself to posting on specifically YouTube. Follow her on Instagram or read one of her depressing tweets. She's there. Mystery Guitar Man. He's one of those YouTubers that nobody, ain't nobody putting this much work into their videos these days. You gotta spend money instead of like, you know, making a little song or whatever. Uh uh, ain't nobody doing all of this no more. And, but you know, Mystery Guitar Man Joe Penna has actually been a very successful YouTuber. I remember when he came out with his film starring Mads Mikkelsen. Pretty impressive. They started that up, one company, I don't think it exists anymore, but one of those YouTube MCNs. Mystery Guitar Man did his thing. Kev Jumba. Nope, I'm definitely not a straight A student. See, this is how it works. Amongst everyone, my grades are above average, but amongst Asian people, my grades are below average. When you're not Asian, let's say you're white. A means awesome. One of my biggest influences as a little kid my early YouTube videos, like my very first YouTube videos, I wanted to be like Kev Jumba. I could say he was the first YouTuber that I just really wanted to download their personality and let it be me, as most 14, 15 year olds do. Everybody thinks he's a monk now, cause he is. He did try to come back to YouTube and I was watching all of his YouTube videos that he posted within the past two years. Then he just privated them all out of nowhere. Stopped posting on YouTube for various reasons from focusing on acting to a devastating accident where he broke his spine and his lungs collapsed. But then he came back online during the pandemic and started streaming and posting a few YouTube videos. He could have reached out to his friends and make high production videos again, but these videos that he was posting were just him alone in his apartment. I'm paraphrasing here, but he said he wanted to become a beacon of hope for YouTubers who are starting alone with little to no production value, just like me. But within the past few weeks, people have been seeing him outside of a music festival. I think it was Rolling Loud. If your For You page is anything like mine, you've probably seen the specific TikTok about Kev Jamba at Rolling Loud. Apparently he's a monk now and is actively recruiting for his religion. And this may come as a big surprise because he is one of the OG internet celebrities. He was part of the first wave of YouTube creators who really made a name for himself. And so how did he go from that to becoming a monk? Giving out religious texts, I believe. Uh -huh. Do you guys remember like Kate Jumba? Nice this like is this. him now. I'm gonna give you this gift set. It's a little comfort, but this contains our main introduction. Oh, but I don't have cards. Oh. Do you have a penny? Uh, you have something you in have there? Yeah, we have Venmo. Here, let's take a picture. Pull that up. Okay. Hi. Hello. So yeah, let uh, Kev Jumba do whatever he wants. Not everybody has to dedicate themselves to making, you know, one hour's worth of content every week or two to be able to profit off AdSense revenue. Some people are actually just creative and uh, aren't uh, man-made algorithms. Charles Trippy, CTFXC. Anybody remember that? You gotta close my eyes and I gotta blindfold it and then I have With music my going and so I can't hear and Allie's gonna take my finger and put it on part of her body and I'm supposed to guess. Vice versa. I can feel it! Yeah, you got it. I got it. Your boob? No! Charles Trippy was such a big deal for such a long time because he was the pioneer of posting every single day vlog style. But to tell you the truth, Casey Neistat came around and everybody who used to make vlogs was like, damn, what I'm doing is not nearly as cool. Why should I even try? But Charles Trippy continued. Good morning, guys. Today, somebody picks up my brain. So, yep. Yay. <laughs> Monty Python. Maybe they'll get it right. <laughs> Obviously, he weirded out his audience when in, the whole thing was based on his relationship with his wife and his two dogs, and then he got another wife who has the same name as her, 
and it was really messy. But he, but once again, Charles Trippy is one of those people that has not disappeared. He is still posting to this day. Do not pull my pants down. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, you give me a back massage? Ah, Ruby. I'm so old, I know that CTFXC stands for Charles Trippy Friend Corps. Also, my thing about daily vloggers, I think what's made daily vlogging so irrelevant is now that everybody has stories like Snapchat stories, Instagram stories, we now are so used to seeing our friends mundane lives um, very easily. But back in the day, you didn't really get to see the mundaneness of anybody's life. You know, actually, I can say you didn't get to see the mundaneness of everybody's life. Now we're really used to it. And that's why vlogs aren't as appealing anymore unless you're doing something amazing. I'm on a deserted island. We're seven days a week. We're going to be buried underground. That's what a vlog has to be now. Hannah Hart. Well, hello. Welcome to my drug kitchen. Me and Hannah Hart j had one of the most awkward moments on stage. And I'm just going to throw Lily Singh in there, too. All you do is motivate yourself to get things done. Do you guys think it's possible to work too hard? Have you ever gotten there before? I have no social life. I don't hang out with my friends. I don't go out to drink. I, I don't go out to parties. I don't go out to have fun. None of that interests me. I choose work. I choose family. Before I had kids, I truly did not believe that happiness was interesting or important. Uh, like John was saying, he didn't believe in happiness. Um, I, I had a point in my life where I didn't think, I thought the word content was a negative word. That just, Stop! Never. Hug me oh right now! God. Get over here and hug me right now! <laughs> right now hug me! Okay. That's the best thing that ever happened to me! Who up here has the most money? The most, the in most our, fun? In a, in most fun. Uh, Hannah. Most fun? Hannah. I had a lot of fun. No, most money. Same thing. I thought this was supposed to be about community. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sadness is a great motivator. I'm gonna take an audience question. Anybody got one? You? All right. How do I get down there? I'm gonna hurt myself. <laughs> what was crazy about Lily Singh to me is that there were billboards for her everywhere. There was so much hype put into this person. Um, you know, I'm talking about 2016, 17, 18-ish. She's the first YouTuber to get a late night talk show instead of me when we all know. It should have been me, but I didn't dedicate my entire life to a parasocial relationship. I bounce in and out on y'all, and I'm sorry about that. Maybe I would be on billboards like her if, uh, you know, I was uh, chronically online and addicted to social media. Yeah, that's me. Both still alive. So this was a weird video to do, so I'll end it on this note. In conclusion, I'm still alive. I know if I had let the haters and losers control me, I wouldn't be. I'm glad looking back. There were times where I didn't want to be. I didn't want to continue, but I chose to. And now what? So if you in your life are like, you know, should I keep on going? Should I keep on being? Hell yeah, because the haters and losers are going to be so mad. They counted me out and I'm still here, okay? All right? So uh, check out this other video I did about something really important. It it's really is. That's all I needed to say, right? <laughs>